When your car is broken too, there's only one thing you wanna do. Open your mouth and let it spew. But I am telling you, stay positive. When you're baking a cake for your family, and your kids are hopped up on caffeine, your fluffy cake is now kinda lean. Remember, don't be mean, stay positive. When your bank account is close to red, you want to cry yourself to bed. It could be worse, you could be dead. Remember what I said, stay positive. Wow, I just, I love that song in that video, Stay Positive, and welcome to week one of this series called Stay Positive, and maybe if you might be a little bit like me, I have to work to stay positive. As a matter of fact, um, sometimes when people, if you've ever been around somebody who was like, overtly positive about everything, they, they can almost be irritating. As, as a matter of fact, there are times that I've uh, considered sarcasm a spiritual gift. Uh, <laughs> and we know that sarcasm is not a spiritual gift, but that's the reason that I, I wanted to do this series and I prayed really hard about what God wanted me to talk about in this season. And, and I know that we're living in a very negative world and it seems like um, we're surrounded by bad news after bad news after bad news, but um, God doesn't want us to be consumed with every th our thoughts to be consumed with everything that's going wrong in the world. Um, that that puts us to a place where we're living in fear instead of faith, and uh, that's never good. As we're going to learn in the pages of the Bible throughout this entire scripture. But if you are one of the people that are struggling with uh, a lot of negativity. Uh, hopefully this message has some words of encouragement and um, to help us all learn how to think better, to think different, to put on the mind that, of Christ, which is what God would have us to have. But um, And the reason for that is that a negative outlook never leads to a positive life. Why don't you say that with me? A negative outlook never leads to a positive life. As a matter of fact, when you look at um, the times in the Bible when the people were full of negativity, uh, those are the times when God literally got sick of their complaining, of their bad attitudes, of their ingratitude, and all of these things. Um, mainly because it, it diffuses faith. It, it unplugs us from God. As we're having this conversation about staying positive, um, I'm sure you could have guessed that we are going to have a little bit of discussion about optimism versus pessimism. And just as fate would have it, I was standing in a line this week and heard an optimist and a pessimist having a discussion. And the pessimist said, well, surely it can't get worse than this. To which the optimist replied, well, of course it can. Now, but rather than giving the definitions of optimism and pessimism and going through that, I thought it might be more effective to talk about what optimism is not. You see, optimism is not a denial of reality at least optimism the way that God would have us to stay positive and be optimistic. Um, it's about having a life that's full of faith. And part of faith is recognizing your current realities, recognizing what's wrong in the world. And, and you can't, um, that's why the second thing is I want you to know is that optimism is not blind faith. 
It's not walking around with your head in the clouds pretending that everything's great in the world and there are no problems and that there are no places where you need to see God show up. Part of faith is that faith overcomes. That's the kind of faith that you and I, the kind of faith that we want to have is an overcoming faith. So there's a, there's a whole list of things that would seem like bad news that we could list off and the, the, um, and they're all around us. You know, the, the numbers on the virus increasing, uh, rumors of the economy crashing, all kinds of things that are going on in our world today that might cause us to lose hope, that might cause us to think that there is a limit on hope, that there is a, a lid on hope, something that we're, we're not going to be able to get past this. This is something that is greater than we can overcome. This is something that's going to keep us down for the rest of our lives. It feels like, it, it, can, fe it can feel like it's permanent, that it's uh, personal. As a matter of fact, pessimists tend to see every negative situation as personal and permanent. But optimism is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it like this. This is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. It's Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. He causes everything to work for the good of those who love God. Now, does this mean that um, our whole life is going to be sunshine and roses and cotton candy and lollipops, whatever you want to say for uh, whatever a good life might look like for you that we're never going to face adversity. Um, that's not what the Bible's saying there. That's not the promise of God. But what the Apostle Paul who wrote that verse is saying that even negative situations can have positive potential and purpose because God is on the throne and God can work all things for our good. And we all know this. We all know that we're supposed to keep a, a positive outlook on life, that we're not supposed to allow life to get us down, that though we may be going through a hard time, we know that. But if you're anything like me, even in times that are not as difficult, I still have to, it's still a fight to stay positive. And why is it that it's such a fight to stay positive? You see, I think that within human nature that we have a constant battle with something that um, I read about called ants. Now, when I say ants, I know the image that you probably have come to your mind is not what we're talking about today. When I'm talking about ANTS, I want to talk about it. It's an acronym meaning automatic negative thoughts. Anybody ever have automatic negative thoughts? That's this pervasive mindset that when we see something going bad, we have this natural tendency to project that it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So like if we're in debt, we see it going worse and worse and worse. If we see things not going our way, we project it to be worse and worse and worse. When we see our children starting to uh, experience bad behavior, not acting like how we've taught them to act, we're expecting it to go. They're, these are automatic negative thoughts and they are part of human nature for most of us. And we have to fight these negative thoughts because uh, just like I know you've heard the song before, the ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. And then the next line says, the ants go marching two by two. 
The ants go marching three by three. It gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. And these automatic negative thoughts have a way of trying to dominate our thought life. And the problem with this is that whatever consumes your thoughts controls your life. Let's say that out loud together. Whatever consumes your thoughts controls your life. And I think that there is a really good chance that whatever the negative thoughts, whatever it is that maybe someone has done to you, so how someone has treated you, how a situation in life hasn't worked out for you, um, how a relationship isn't working out for you, whatever it is that you're going through, be it a struggle with your health, a struggle with your finances, a struggle with your marriage, a struggle with parenting, a struggle with job, you fill in the blank. We're all struggling with something. And most of us are struggling with more than one something. And most of us, it's a multitude. That's why we're consumed with these automatic negative thoughts. But if, if you're like me, I, I wanna live in faith and not fear. And I want to believe that God is working all things out for my good. And for sure, I don't want negativity to consume my thoughts and control my life. And if optimism is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good, then I'm going to be an optimist, even if I have to fight to be an optimist. As a matter of fact, everyone who desires to be an optimist, everyone who desires, I believe that everyone who wants to have that positive outlook has to fight for a positive outlook because negativity comes easy. Seeing the dark side of things comes easy. Seeing with the eyes of faith that actually overcomes, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And I want you to know that when the Apostle Paul wrote those words, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. He was not writing that from the perspective of a person who had lived a life that was free from adversity. He had um, his life threatened. He had been beaten and left for dead on many occasions. He had been kicked out of I don't know how many cities, all for the sake of the cause of Christ at the point in his life when he wrote this book of Romans. And the crazy thing is, is from the point when he wrote this book, he actually experienced far more adversity. I, I wonder sometimes, you know, it was after that he wrote these words that he um, ended up in prison, first in, first in Jerusalem, and then shipwrecked on a way to a prison in Rome, and then in a prison in Rome. I wonder how many times that Paul had to encourage himself in the Lord and remind himself that all things work for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. As a matter of fact, though, it was later after he was in that prison in Rome that he wrote this letter to the Philippian church. And he said to them, them he said, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. You see, the apostle, the apostle Paul, he understood that truth that even negative situations can have positive potential and purpose. As a matter of fact, he wrote when he wrote that letter to the Philippians, uh, he knew that he was in jail, but he was in jail writing a whole bunch of scripture that we now call the New Testament. 
God, God used the adversity that he was going through to accomplish God's plans and internal purposes so that you and I would be able to get strength from the words that God, that God penned through the Apostle Paul so that we could stay positive even during a season like the one that we're in because there is no limit on hope. No limits. And no one understood this better than Jesus. I, we're about to receive communion in just a moment. So hopefully you uh, caught the little clip at the beginning that told you to grab whatever you have on hand um, because we're going to be receiving communion together. But I want you to think about, you know, the first communion was actually what's referred to as the Last Supper. And, you know, as I think about the Last Supper, I imagine Jesus walking into the room where he would be having the final meal that him and his disciples would have together. And he's seeing the, he's seeing the bread and the wine and the table prepared. And he's knowing what's coming. He knows everything that's coming. As a matter of fact, I wonder if when he looked, as he looked into a, his glass of wine, did he, did he see the shadow of the cross? He, he knew what he was going to have to go through. But even in that time, it's amazing to me that Jesus' message to the disciples who were going to have to go on after Jesus was crucified, his message to them that day is the same message that I've been giving to you this day, to stay positive. Jesus, in fact, he said it like this. He said, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I, where I, where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I told you. He told them, I'm about to die. I'm about to be crucified on a cross. He told, he told them what had happened and, and, and they were sad. But Jesus' response to them he, was to stay positive. He said it like this. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. No one ever understood better than Jesus that negative situations can have positive potential and purpose. And had he not given his life on that cross, you and I would still be in our sin. But because of what he did for us, we stand here forgiven and free and we have so much to be positive for. There's nothing in this world that could ever separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So it's with that thought, with that thought, I, I want you to just, I, I want you to come to that, that room whatever it is that you're dealing with and go ahead and confront whatever negativity whatever negativity that you may be facing right now i ask you to go ahead and see it in the room are you struggling with sickness do you know anybody who's struggling with sickness struggling with finances struggling with relationships i want you to remember as we go into communion God knows everything that you're going through. But I want you to also know that he's working everything for the good. I, I, I want you to just say it out loud that God is working all things for my good. All things.
at the church we got these new cups that have the bread on top and the juice below. Uh, if you happen to be in the area and you're one of our people who uh, watch Florence Church online and you normally attend, uh, but you're not right now for health reasons or whatever reasons, and you would like us to drop off one of these for the next time that we're doing communion together, uh, just uh, put something in the in the message right now and write uh, communion cup for me next time or something like that in the comment section. I'll look at it in the comment section and I'll make sure we get some of those over to you. Um, either way, it, it, it's it's completely acceptable to, to, to use whatever it is that you have, but I'm going to take this wafer here and we are going to receive communion together believing that God is working everything for our good, that God sent Jesus so that he could work all things for our good. And Jesus said on that day when he had the cross so heavy on his mind that just a few verses later, he would be praying in the garden and praying to God, God, if it's possible, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. But Jesus, he handed his disciples the bread and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And likewise, he took of the cup and handed them the wine and said, take and drink. Do this often in remembrance of me. So whatever it is that you're going through, we're gonna remember God loves us and that he's working all things for our good. Even the negative things, even the negative situations can have positive potential and purpose because he's working all things for our good. And as we close, I'm just going to pray over you, Heavenly Father. I pray over every single person who's listening to this message, that you would help them to stay positive, that you would fill them with a vision of a limitless hope, that there is no limit on the hope that they have because their hope is in you. And in the end, we know that you win, Lord, that you have all things working for our good. So God, whatever it is that they're going through, whatever struggles they have, God, I pray that you would help them to, to stay in faith and live in hope and not be overcome by fear and anxiety and worry. I pray that you even right now begin to work in their minds and help them to see through eyes of faith that they are more than overcomers through you who loved us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to contribute financially to the Florence Church, please visit theflorencechurch.com and click on the giving tab. We're gonna close with a song. Thank you so much for joining us today. And don't forget, stay positive. God bless.